breaking news tonight. An American child is released by Hamas along with 16 others today with only one day remaining in the negotiated ceasefire. Four-year-old Abigail Idan is now safely back in Israel after being held hostage for 50 days. The update late today from her aunt. New video of hostages being loaded up in buses inside Gaza and the emotional reunions as other children are returned to their families. Now the push to get more Americans out. We will not stop working until every hostage is returned to their loved ones. Three college students of Palestinian descent shot while visiting Vermont for the holiday weekend. Two still in the ICU. Authorities say a man opened fire on them unprovoked. Police zeroing in on the possibility of a hate crime as they hunt for the shooter. Today is expected to be the biggest air travel day ever. Nearly three million people taking to the skies. Can the airports handle it? Our NBC News exclusive inside the Drug Enforcement Agency bust of a massive fentanyl ring. How Instagram photos like this help them charge 25 people. And countdown to Cyber Monday. We are just hours away from the sales kicking off where you can find the best deals. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. On the third day of a carefully orchestrated ceasefire between Israel and Hamas, an American citizen was among the hostages released. Her name is Abigail Idan, and she just turned four years old on Friday, the youngest American citizen taken by Hamas. For 50 days, she was inside Gaza. Tonight, she is free. We're seeing many joyful homecomings this weekend. This is the moment two children were reunited with their families. In the three days of the ceasefire, a total of 58 hostages have been released, but approximately 180 still remain in Gaza, including as many as nine more Americans. President Biden said today he's working to extend the ceasefire and get more hostages out. We have two reports to lead us off, beginning with Aaron McLaughlin in Tel Aviv. Tonight, four-year-old American Abigail Edan is coming home. The first U.S. citizen to be released by Hamas is part of the temporary ceasefire agreement, joined by 16 other hostages today, according to the Israeli government, in exchange for 39 Palestinians held in Israeli jails, according to the Israeli prison service. Tonight, Al Jazeera broadcasting this shocking footage, which it claims was shot today in Gaza City. You can see children loaded into Red Cross vehicles and an older woman requiring immediate medical treatment. The vehicle surrounded by Hamas militants. All this in the same city the Israeli military has declared to be under IDF control. Tonight, President Biden expressing his relief that Abigail was finally released. Today, she's free and Jill and I, together with so many Americans, are praying for the fact that she is going to be all right. Abigail's aunt releasing this video statement. She just landed in the hospital and she's being checked and taken care of. I want to thank everybody for all your love and support. The youngest American taken hostage, now a symbol of the brutality of October 7th, when terrorists stormed her family's kibbutz. Earlier this month, her great aunt sitting down with Lester Holt, describing the moment Hamas shot and killed Abigail's father with the little girl in his arms. Abigail actually had crawled out from under her father's body and full of his blood went to a neighbor and they took her in. Four members of the Brodet's family and Abigail were then kidnapped, all now released. <laughs> Tonight's exchange and scenes like these of heartfelt reunions giving other families hope that their nightmares too can be over. Like this moment when Sharon Abigdori and her daughter Nome were finally reunited with their family, overcome by emotion. And this moment when nine-year-old Emily Hand reunited with her father. Her father Thomas says he'd been told Emily was dead, only to find out weeks later they had reason to believe she was alive and taken to Gaza. At the time, the single father had this message for his little girl. What do you want to say to Emily? Hopefully you'll be here for your birthday. Be strong. 
Emily missed her birthday, but is now back home safe. Reunited with Thomas last night. This is we're learning new details of what life is like living in Hamas control. Karen Munder was released Friday alongside her mother and son, Ohad, telling a relative they slept on benches and were given bread and rice, but not regularly. And Aaron's with me now. There is one day left in this four-day ceasefire deal. What happens to those still being held, Aaron? Well, Kate, according to a U.S. official, under the terms of this agreement, there'll be Red Cross visits for any hostage left in Gaza. Kate. Aaron McLaughlin, thank you. Just after the hostages were released today, President Biden spoke to the nation, pushing for the release of more Americans and saying he hopes to extend the temporary ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. Ali Rafa is at the White House for us. Ali, tomorrow is supposed to be the final day of this deal. How optimistic is the president that more Americans will be released tomorrow? Kate, the president says he's hopeful, but still aware of the challenges that lie ahead. And tonight, he's launching a full court press, pushing to make progress in two key areas. First, getting more hostages freed, including eight Americans and one green card holder. The president also pushing for an extension of the fragile pause in fighting. Just one day of the deal remains unless Hamas and Israel agree to extend the pause in return for freeing more of those in captivity. The White House says President Biden spoke with the Don's family, as well as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu this afternoon. The leaders agreeing to remain in close contact as they say their work is not done. Kate. Ali Rafa for us at the White House. Ali, thank you. Now to our other big story tonight. According to police, three college students, all of Palestinian descent, were simply visiting one of their families in Vermont for the Thanksgiving break when they were shot and injured last night. The gunman is still on the loose, and there are growing concerns that this could have been a hate crime. Liz Kreutz has the latest. Tonight, a manhunt underway for the suspect who police say shot and injured three Palestinian U.S. college students who were visiting family in Burlington, Vermont for Thanksgiving. All units be advised the shooters unaccounted for. Burlington police say around 6.30 p.m. Saturday, the friends who were speaking Arabic and wearing traditional Palestinian kafia scarves were out walking when they were confronted by a white man with a handgun who, without speaking, fired at least four rounds before fleeing on foot. We heard a man screaming in pain. It was very scary. Police say the three men, all 20 years old, were shot and transported to the hospital. Families of the victims have identified them as Hisham Awaturni, a junior at Brown University, and Kinan Abdul Hamid, a junior at Haverford College, both U.S. citizens, and Tassin Ahmed, a junior at Trinity College. The friends grew up together in the West Bank city of Ramallah. Rania Maya is their former school director. They're amazing students, and we're proud of them. And they were there for the Thanksgiving holiday, spending it at Hisham's grandmother's. The victims' families releasing a joint statement saying, as parents, we are devastated by the horrific news that our children were targeted and shot. They're calling on law enforcement to treat the investigation as a hate crime. We are afraid that it is most likely a crime against Palestinians. Officials saying there's no known motive yet, but the Burlington mayor stressing the possibility of a hate crime is being prioritized in the police investigation. Tonight, families say two of the men are in ICU, Hisham recovering after being shot in the spine. And the parents who live in the West Bank are now desperately trying to get here to the U.S. to be by their son's side. This as the search for the suspect continues. Kate. Liz, thank you. Millions of Americans are making their way back home today after the Thanksgiving holiday, and a record number of them are flying. Get this, more people were set to pass through America's airports today than ever before. So did the nation's airports and airlines step up to the challenge? Here's Marissa Parra. Tonight, the biggest test for the nation's airports they've ever faced. The mad rush home from the holiday, leading to what's predicted to be the biggest air travel day in American history. Hopefully we can get through this line and get to our gate pretty quickly. Nearly three million people set to take to the skies today. I'm sure TSA has their hands full, full today. So as we make our way around the corner, we're like crossing our fingers that, you know, it'll be calm. The numbers are daunting. Atlanta's airport saw 30,000 passengers before 9 a.m. Everything went so smooth. 
And today, Los Angeles International Airport projected up to 230,000 travelers. Nasty weather swept across the Midwest, delaying hundreds of flights in Chicago. Nationwide, delays topped 4,000, but cancellations less than 50. There is going to be some snow on the roadways. 14 million were under winter weather alerts today from Iowa to Maine. On the roads, snow, ice causing accidents across Kansas, but in the air. Today's a big day in the travel industry, and I think it's a little bit of a victory lap for the industry because everything this holiday travel season has gone smoothly, even with a couple storms thrown in the mix. TSA has seen seven of its 10 busiest travel days on record this year without the major nationwide meltdowns we saw last year. They staffed up appropriately, and I think that's the biggest thing in getting such a mass amount of people through the airport. Marissa, so much good news. She's at BWI tonight. Uh, is the rush over after tonight? Not quite. Some airports like Atlanta still seeing their peak through 9 p.m. And for folks in the Midwest, the winter weather today is still slowing things down. But don't expect things to be fully back to normal by tomorrow. AAA says Monday, still a busy day for air travel. Kate. All right, Marissa, thank you. This could be a critical week for George Santos, who faces a vote that could see him kicked out of Congress for serious ethics violations. But Santos is not going quietly, promising to reveal secrets about bad behavior, he says, by some of his own colleagues. Julie Serkin has more from Capitol Hill. Indicted Congressman George Santos is accepting his fate tonight admitting he expects his colleagues will vote him out of Congress during a three-hour tirade on social media Friday. I know I'm going to get expelled when this expulsion resolution goes to the floor. I have done the math over and over. <laughs> it doesn't look really good. Santos survived past attempts to expel him, including an effort earlier this month. But after the Bipartisan Ethics Committee found Santos sought to fraudulently exploit every aspect of his House candidacy for his own personal financial profit, dozens of Republicans and Democrats who voted to spare the embattled congressman now say he's not fit to serve. The blistering report accused Santos of spending campaign donations on nearly everything but his run for office. Instead, he allegedly used the money to pay for his personal rent, to take out cash from an ATM at a casino, to spend lavishly at designer stores, for cosmetic treatments like Botox, and on the website OnlyFans, which is known for its adult content. The ethics panel did not make any recommendations on Santos's political future, but its GOP chairman filed a resolution to kick the first-term lawmaker out. Santos railed against other elected officials he called hypocrites. I have co colleagues who are more worried about getting drunk every night with the next lobbyist that they're going to screw and pretend like none of us know what's going on. This happens every single week. Where are the ethics investigations in that? And Julie's with us from Capitol Hill now. Julie, the House is back from the Thanksgiving break this week, right? So how soon could we see that vote on expelling George Santos? Kate, nothing's been finalized yet, but the House could take it up as early as Tuesday. That vote would require two-thirds majority to pass. Santos, for his part, saying he will not resign on his own. Kate? All right, Julie, thank you. When we come back, our exclusive look at what it takes to hunt down a fentanyl trafficking ring, the social media posts that helped officials catch the criminals. Also, the biggest Cyber Monday ever, the sales now just hours away, how to cash in on the best deals. We're back with an NBC News exclusive about a massive fentanyl bust. Every year, 70,000 Americans die from fentanyl overdoses or poisonings after taking a pill they thought was something else. And behind every pill is a network of criminals. We got rare access as the DEA worked to bring those responsible for one single overdose to justice. Here's Ken Delanian. It began with the death of a 20-year-old mom just a month after her baby boy's first birthday. The estranged boyfriend FaceTimed me. I told me she was not moving. Another American lost to the scourge of fentanyl. And what did the police tell you about what they learned shortly afterwards? Well, the police just told me that it was an overdose. 
Law enforcement couldn't save Diamond Lynch, but they could seek justice for her. We have something we call OD justice. Ann Milgram is the DEA administrator. We're getting photos every day. Her agency partnered with local law enforcement. Their goal? To stop the traffickers and the source of supply, stop every single part of that supply chain that is that killed Diamond Lynch and also is killing other Americans. They started with her cell phone. Everybody has a cell phone in their pocket, and that basically means everyone has a drug dealer in their pocket. Much of the dealing done out in the open. The fentanyl that's killing Americans are being sold on Snapchat, on TikTok, Facebook, Marketplace, Instagram, openly, uh, and, and on the open media. From text and Instagram messages, they found the people who sold Diamond the pills. One of them seen here brazenly flashing handfuls of money. They've since been convicted and sentenced to lengthy prison terms. From there, investigators went higher. We expanded our investigation and identified each rung of the fentanyl supply network. Tracing their cell phones and Instagram messages to find the people who supplied the dealers with the deadly drug. That network included wholesalers in California selling product made in Mexico with chemicals imported from China, even bragging about the quality of their product on Instagram. Often, authorities say, they smuggled pills in candy boxes like these. So far, 25 people have been charged. All but two have pleaded not guilty. We've been able to trace more than a million potential deadly doses of fentanyl coming to the Washington, D.C. area in one year. That's her prom picture right there. Diamond's mother, now raising her grandson, wants everyone to understand the lethal risk of fentanyl. Definitely one pill can kill. It's chemical warfare on American citizens, period. A tragic death brings a measure of justice. Ken Delanian, NBC News, Washington. Ken, thank you for that. Still ahead, the Cyber Monday set to shatter records just hours away now. We'll help you find the best deals online, including one retailer advertising up to 80% off. Well, Cyber Monday starts just hours from now, and it is expected to shatter records with more people shopping online than ever before. But with brick-and-mortar sales off to a slow start, retailers may need to do a lot more to convince shoppers to click and buy. Here's Brian Chung. For shoppers looking for deep discounts, the countdown is on. But ahead of the busiest online shopping day of the year, warning signs for retailers. What am I doing with 10%? select items. I need the 100 to 90% off. Coming out of COVID, shoppers were ready to spend. This year, early signs are they're ready to save, looking for even bigger deals. If you just keep shopping, you might find, you know, you'll, you'll find something, especially online. MasterCard says this Black Friday, shoppers spent 2.5% more than last year, a bump erased by inflation. That means the stakes are high for retailers this Cyber Monday they'll have to do more to woo consumers. The consumer has a lot of power uh, this year, especially. They're in the driver's seat. Target is slashing prices up to 60% off. Walmart is advertising up to 80% off. And Amazon, which had a round of big deals in October, is rolling out deals every five minutes through tomorrow to keep consumers coming back throughout the day. We're expecting the deepest discounts on the categories electronics and apparel. The deepest discounts will fall in the range of 25 to 30% for both categories. And confidence that those packages will arrive on time. Ship Matrix says parcel carriers have more capacity to deliver than they need this season. We broke up the country into eight regions where what this allows us to do is ship items to customers from within their region. So what that means is they get their items faster. Paving the way to a seamless season of gift getting and gift giving from the comfort of your couch. Brian Chung, NBC News, New York. What if we have to work tomorrow? When we come back, there's good news tonight about a half-court hero, why his astonishing shot was a win for the whole school. There's good news tonight about what it means to win and the Arizona high school celebrating one student's victory with an electrifying show of unity and inclusion. This was the legendary once in a lifetime buzzer beater that kids at Liberty High School in Peoria, Arizona will be talking about for years. T from three point range is 18th point of the night. 
Everyone crowds around him. A moment he will never forget. See that player in the white shirt? That's Junior, Tona 2 Ramirez. Everyone calls him T. There he is, making his half-court hoop dream come true with just seconds to go. His proud mom, Rocio, in the stands and over the moon. I feel, oh, you're my son, you did it. That was fantastic. That incredible moment, a point of pride yeah. for coach Jesse Wilk. She runs Lincoln High's Unified Sports Program, Go Taylor. Go giving students with special needs like T the courage and confidence to pursue their passions. The Unified Program at Liberty High School is a program that combines students with disabilities and then students uh, without disabilities, and they, we have different classes. So our class is Unified Sport. It's my favorite class of the day. 20 seconds, 20 seconds. For Coach Wilkes, seeing T celebrated that day was about more than just a win on the court. It was a victory too, she says, for breaking down barriers and making everyone feel included. Um, sorry, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to tear up. <laughs> the program means a lot to me. And so seeing this light being shine on our students with disabilities, it, it really means a lot. So just that these students have that moment uh, all together and then to see our student body surround T like that, I think everyone in that gym got better that day. And T says he was inspired by his favorite NBA star, Stephen Curry. So Steph, if you're out there, if you're watching, give T a shout out for us. That's NBC Nightly News for this Sunday night. Stay right here for NFL football. Up next, the Baltimore Ravens versus the L.A. Chargers. I'm Kate Snow for all of us here at NBC News. Stay safe. Have a great night. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.